So look, we are entering a new era. Everything is changing. And the way we manage Facebook ads and the way we interpret that data has to change too. We're entering a future of misinformation online. With the rise of AI, it's now easier than ever for false information to spread and the misrepresentation of the truth is on the rise. So in today's video, I'm exposing how Facebook is lying to you misrepresenting your data within your ads by over-reporting, sometimes under-reporting, and attributing purchases to the wrong ads, audiences, and campaigns, leading you to believe that some things that are working are actually not. But this isn't entirely Facebook's fault. There is an even bigger player out there that's behind the scenes and is responsible for these inaccuracies that you now face. And that company is called Apple. It's the largest company in the world. And they've been making changes to how user data is processed and reported and tracked online. And the result of this has impacted millions of business owners, making it harder for them to successfully run Facebook ad campaigns, TikTok ad campaigns, and Google ad campaigns and report on the metrics that they once used to be able to track. There was a time period where we all were successfully running ads and knew exactly down to the exact dollar how much we were making back. But now the present isn't the same case. Things have changed and so do we. And because of this, I've created a secret software that I've been using with our Facebook, TikTok, and Google ads to track better ad data to near perfect accuracy, giving us better insights and ways to optimize our campaign successfully. So here's what we will be covering today. We're gonna to be covering how privacy changes have impacted your performance, how Facebook tracks purchases so that way we understand, the ways that Facebook attributes those purchases, and the problem with the Facebook ad attribution data, and how you can track a more true metric in ways that we can set up third-party tracking with Surge and how to analyze your Surge data with Shopify. And some of the privacy changes that have impacted your results and conversions, Meta has said specifically these privacy changes will limit your ability to effectively deliver your ads to people based on their engagement with your business, measure and report on conversions from certain customers, ensuring your ads are delivered to the most relevant audiences at the right frequency, and accurately attributing app installs to people using iOS 14 and later, and it's impacted ways that they predict and optimize your cost per action over time, and has prevented them from effectively allocating budgets. And Apple has essentially broken Facebook's ad machine, and who's going to fix it? But first, let's talk about how Facebook actually tracks these purchases. One, they use the Facebook Pixel. This is a pixel tracking script that's added to your website. So when somebody visits, they can track if somebody visits the website, adds to cart, purchases. This is how they actually get some of the data. Then they use another tool, which is the conversion API. This is on the server side where it actually sends the data from the back end to your Facebook ad account and can report on those metrics as well. And then sometimes you can use a third party tracking tool to connect to Facebook to track back these purchases. And then finally, offline events, where if you have an actual store location, you can send this data over, or you can use another tool to actually import your information to Facebook. And now there's no one perfect way to track your Facebook ads. There are ways to get around some of these problems. And Facebook attributes purchases by default off of a seven day click window or a one day view window. And essentially what that means is if you click on an ad and you purchase within that seven day window, Facebook can attribute that sell back to your ad. Or if you simply viewed the ad, went to Google, typed in that name and made the purchase, they can also report that as a conversion that came from Facebook, even though that person used Google to buy. And then finally, they use estimated purchases. And this is where a lot of the problems start to begin. This essentially means that Facebook has the control to essentially say you got to sell on an ad where you might not have actually gotten that purchase, making false information become more prevalent and making the inaccuracies in your ads even more severe, leading you to believe that your campaign performance is either going up or down, but in reality, it might not be doing that. And as you can see, Facebook quite literally has a quotation here that says these results might not include all your conversion data, meaning they might actually miss some of the purchases or they might just add in purchases if they believe that it actually got a sell when it didn't. Because of this, they're using a statistical model that helps them to provide a more complete measurement with conversion data if it's missing or partial, making the misrepresentation of your ads more common. And just to go in depth on this and actually break down what statistical modeling is, well, Facebook models conversions based off of ad interactions that can vary between users, and they use a number of different measurable conversion data 
in groups of users with conversion data that may be missing or partial. For example, due to the user privacy changes with Apple, they'll determine groups that are more likely to behave similarly across their platform. And by doing so, they're using this modeling data to be more representative and less biased based off population differences between groups and users, and then model the missing or partial conversion data based on the measurable conversions. Now, to sum that up in a more easy to understand way, essentially, if somebody is not able to be tracked from your Facebook ad and they click on it and go and purchase on their website, they're basically saying, okay, this user is most similar to other people who have purchased from ads in the past. So therefore we believe that maybe this person did make a purchase on the website. So we're gonna go ahead and claim that purchase. And this is not accurate by any means and can largely overestimate or underestimate the purchases that you get. And they distribute these reported conversions in order to provide a more intuitive or complete reporting. And essentially what this means is they're distributing conversions among ad breakdowns. So if you get 10 purchases from a specific ad, it might only show five on that ad and they might place those other five purchases across different ads that they think it might have gotten a sell from. But the problems don't just end there. Not only that, but there's delayed reporting now, meaning it can take up to at least 24 hours before some of that data is even sent back to your ads to be tracked. And the worst part about this is results will be reported based on the time they are reported to Meta. So if a purchase happens on your website, it could be delayed by up to 24 hours, three days, or even a week later. And essentially that purchase, whenever it gets sent to Facebook is the day that it's reported. So if they purchase today, Facebook might report that sell three days, even a week into the future saying that you gotta sell on a day that you actually didn't, making it harder for you to optimize and understand where your purchases are coming from in real time. And we cover the statistical modeling and how that affects your performance, but we can also see here, they are using only seven day attribution, meaning if somebody clicks on your Facebook ad and purchases 10 days later, 14 days later by saving your browser or coming back to your site in a later period, Facebook won't claim that purchase, which leaves out some of that purchase data that actually came from your ads. So because of this, your Facebook ads are no longer tracking in real time. Purchases can be delayed by up to three days or longer and show as a purchase that came on a day that it actually didn't. Purchases might be estimated using their statistical modeling, misrepresenting where a sell truly came from. And Facebook can't pull in all your conversion values. If somebody's opted out of tracking and somebody purchased a $100 item on your site, Facebook might estimate that purchase and say you gotta sell, but they might not be able to actually tell you how much they spend on your site, making your return on ad spend much lower than it actually is in a lot of cases. And not only that, but Facebook can take credit for sales even if they went to Google or purchased from an email or SMS marketing campaign that you sent. So if somebody has viewed your Facebook ad, doesn't remember they saw it, they just scrolled past it within a second and continued on in their social media feed, but they just so happened to be on your email list and you sent out an email that day and that person purchased, Facebook will claim that they actually got that sale. When in reality, it was your email marketing campaign that converted that individual. And so Facebook's really not using a true last click attribution window. And the reason last click is important is because you can know exactly what was the last thing somebody did that resulted in a sell. And that's important information because you wanna know what marketing activities are truly moving the meter for your business. So that way you can more accurately allocate your budgets or do more of those activities that are working for you. And not only that, but Facebook's not tracking outside of seven days. So anybody who's actually clicked on your ad, saved your ad, or came back to your website after a seven day period in purchase, Facebook's not reporting on it at all. And as you can see here, if you have your conversion API connected, your settings, Facebook is determining based off the data they're receiving, how frequently it comes in. They might only check to see if you got a purchase every hour, or they might only check daily or even weekly, which is an extremely long wait period for you to find out if you're getting sales. And with you spending hundreds of dollars per day, that's a lot of money to be spending before knowing where your actual sales are coming from. So what we're going to do is show you exactly how you can track a more true metric across your campaign analytics, reporting on a much better return on ad spend, getting a more true accuracy of where your purchases are coming from, that way you can better optimize your Facebook, TikTok, and Google ads. And we can do this by using a tool called Surge. And once you've connected Surge, you'll see a similar dashboard to what is here, where you can actually see how many orders Facebook has reported, how many Surge has reported. And in this case, Facebook's only reported eight for today. Surge has already picked up 11. The reason because of this is because of delayed attribution. Facebook's waiting on those purchases to come through so they can attribute them. And also they simply have missed some of the orders. And there's a lot of different scenarios that you can counter this in, which makes it much harder for you to know what your Facebook ads data is telling you, whereas Surge can give you a more real-time accuracy and truly tell you what the actual number of purchases were from your Facebook ads based off of the last click. So Surge tracks differently than Facebook, so that way we can get a more accurate picture of where sales are coming from.
And I'm gonna show you a real example of what I mean by this and how stark of a difference this can actually make in your results. So this data right here is based off of one day of purchase data. And Shopify had attributed 17 orders from this single day. Facebook claimed that out of those 17 orders, 14 of those orders came from Facebook. Whereas Surge reported seven Facebook orders that came directly from somebody who clicked on an ad and made a sell that day. Surge also picked up that there was four people who went to Google and placed that order. And then three where people typed in the URL directly and checked out. And then two of those sales actually came from an email marketing campaign. And the other one was from Bing. So how is it that Facebook's saying that they got near double the amount of orders that Surge is tracking when we know that four of those people came from Google, three came from direct, two from email, and one from Bing? tracking total 17 orders on Surge and a total of 17 on Shopify, breaking down exactly each piece of information on where this came from. And you can see Facebook for that September 3rd period only has 14 reported purchases here that they're claiming. Surge is showing the full 17 and also breaking down and telling you exactly which person came from each cell on your Facebook ad, your Google, your direct, email marketing, and even Bing. So we know exactly where these cells came from with Surge, but Facebook has not only overreported by the amount of purchases it's claiming, but also it's telling you that your Facebook ads are performing better than they actually are, which is not a very good thing because it can lead you to believe that you should be spending more on that campaign. But in reality, you have other sources that are resulting in these orders. Here are some of the ways that you can set up surge ad tracking. Once you've actually installed the app on your Shopify and you've gone to settings and you've gone to your connections and you've connected your Facebook ad account, you can then manually apply the surge tracking parameters by clicking on this button right here and it'll give you the tracking script to be able to track your Facebook ads. All we simply got to do is hit copy, go to your Facebook ads, we hit view setup and you can go to the ad level and see exactly how your URL parameters are set. And if they don't look like this exact parameter with surge, then you simply need to go to edit, scroll bottom of your ad and paste that URL parameter here so that way you can track your Facebook ads more accurately. And you wanna make sure every single ad you're running has this URL parameter applied to it so that way you can track exactly where your cells are coming from with your Facebook ads. And you can bulk edit your ads and do this. And now you might be wondering, well, I don't wanna reset my actual engagements by applying this parameter and editing my ad. Well, the way you do that is by selecting use existing posts Post, and that will lock in your social proof. And then you simply place the URL parameter and hit publish. This retains all of the people who've engaged with your ad, making sure that you don't lose any social proof on there, but it also gives you more insights with your data by allowing you to actually track back these more true metrics. And once you've actually set all this up from the day that you apply all the URL parameters to your ads going forward, you will start to be able to see this data populate and surge. By going to your performance dashboard, you can select Facebook and you can turn on Facebook generated data and start comparing the orders that Facebook is tracking and Surge is tracking. You're never going to have a one-to-one -one match between Facebook and Surge because Facebook has a much different way of reporting. We just covered this where they're estimating purchases by applying sales to ads that actually didn't get the order. They're using delayed attribution, which means that a purchase that happened a few days ago is being reported that it actually came in on today when it didn't. They're using seven day click and one day view attribution, meaning if somebody viewed your ad just by scrolling right past it and actually converted from your email or went to Google and clicked on an ad and made an order, Facebook's claiming that sale when they didn't get it. So whenever you look at this on a longer period, you might think that you're not tracking all of your sales with Surge, but in reality, Facebook just might be over-reporting the data to fluff their numbers. And with Surge, you can actually see exactly where these orders came from and who the people are specifically. We can actually see their names in the exact conversion value that it had, allowing us to know that we got a 1.78x ROAS, even though we tracked nearly 20 less conversions than what Facebook's saying, but Facebook, once again, isn't able to pick up all of the conversion data with the ads. Even if they estimate, they can't always estimate the sell because that would be too complex. So therefore, you're able to get a much better idea of what your actual return on ad spend is with Surge, and you'll know that all of those purchases that Surge tracked 
are people who quite literally clicked on your ad and made the sell. And these purchases can be attributed even beyond a seven day click window. So if somebody saves your site and comes back two weeks, three weeks later and makes the purchase, we can still track back all the way to the original ad that they purchased from, allowing us to see a much better overview of where sales are originating. And when we go to our sources page, we can see that Surge has picked up 24 orders with Facebook. We can see exactly who those people are. We know that one person typed in the URL directly, five people use Google to check out. That was the last touch point. Three had self-referred themselves with the URL from the website for a total of 33 orders from Shopify. When we go to our performance and click on that exact same date, we can see that Surge picked up 22, but Facebook's claiming 29 out of 33 of those orders came from Facebook. But in reality, some of those people use Google and some of them actually were self-referred. So you can start to see where the inaccuracies begin with Facebook and how the data can falsely lead to you believing where you should be optimizing. So with Surge, you're able to actually understand where these sales are coming from and can see exactly what your true return on ad spend is, how much you're spending on a daily basis, and how many orders you're receiving because of this. And once you connect TikTok and Google, you can have multiple platforms and be able to see exactly where all of your sales are coming from based off each touch point. If you're running Google or TikTok ads, Facebook might be claiming those orders. And so you wanna know which platform is getting the best return on ad spend so that way you can effectively optimize and deliver spend where it's necessary. So if you're on Shopify and haven't used Surge yet, I highly recommend to install it. You get a free 21 day trial. You can set up a demo call with the actual team and they will help you set this up for you and implement all of the URL parameters to make sure you've effectively connected it. So that way you can get a more true accuracy of where sales are coming from, allowing you to better optimize and scale up budget based off where you're actually getting your purchases from. So go ahead and get the free trial link by clicking the link below this video or by going to surge.com and clicking on the install app on Shopify for free. And make sure to comment down below your biggest pain point with Facebook ads and I'll be selecting one winner to hop on a free coaching call with myself to solve that exact problem with you. And if you're interested in joining our one-on-one -on -one ads mastery mentorship where we go over your Facebook ads, your TikTok ads, your actual organic marketing strategies, ways to better optimize, how to structure your creatives, ways to improve your conversion rates online, then definitely make sure to DM me the word mentor at Real Chase Chapel, and we're happy to answer any questions you have, or you can simply click the link below to set up a call with our team. And once again, it's your favorite digital marketer here, Chase Chapel. Cheers and bye, y'all.